mic is hot. Yeah. That was the camera's good. running. The mic is always hot. Yeah. Bipartisan. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trying to help him look good for the camera. There's no help. <laughs> Should I go ahead? And sure. Start? Is everybody ready? Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ryan Grunenfelder. I'm Senior Director of Advocacy and Outreach for AARP Illinois. I stand here today on behalf of AARP Illinois' 1.7 million members in strong support of House Bill 4431, legislation that would end Illinois' age discriminatory practice of requiring older drivers to retake their driving test solely based on their age rather than their functional ability. For years, we have consistently heard directly from our members time and time again, asking why Illinois is the only state in the nation that still uses age as a factor to require people to retake their driving test. Most who call have told us they consider it age discrimination. A September 2023 report released by the Illinois Secretary of State titled Study on Age-Related -related Driving Abilities revealed that senior drivers are the safest drivers in Illinois with the lowest crash rates. IDOT data in that study revealed that from 2018 through 2022, drivers aged 75 and older consistently experienced lower crash rates compared to nearly every other age group, demonstrating that Illinois drivers who are 75 and older are among the safest drivers of any on the road. And that's a direct quote from that report. As a result of the study, Secretary of State Janulius, uh, via rule, raised the minimum age to take the driver test from 75 to age 79. And AARP Illinois does commend that change, but we need more. We need to remove it completely. So it's time for Illinois to join the other 49 states to entirely remove age as a factor and align evidence-based practices focusing on functional abilities rather than age. We urge the Illinois General Assembly to pass House Bill 4431 to make it a reality. Uh, with that, I'd like to turn it over to a few of the legislators who have joined us today and to a, uh, a ERP volunteer who's going to share her story. So I'll start with Representative Keiker. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, I am State Representative Jeff Keiker of the 70th District. I represent parts of DeKalb, Kane, and McHenry County. Uh, this is a bill that came to me, again, like so many great bills that we have, came to me from constituent complaints and constituent concerns. And what we ran into is consistent issues with seniors in our state having the ability to get time at the Secretary of State's office to renew their driver's license. And then discovering that each time they renew their driver's license, every two years and sometimes every one year, they need to perform a behind the wheel driver's test in order to secure that license. Folks, the only other time you do a behind the wheel driver's test is when you turn 16 and potentially get called out to prove that you can drive. So in thinking about this, why have as a state policy, every senior in the state of Illinois, every two years sit behind the driver's wheel and prove that they can drive? I think I understand the motivation behind it, but I think that it's more appropriate instead of being ageist and deciding at a certain birthday that you're no longer able, that we put a dynamic in place that allows for triggers. Triggers like a physical condition that causes you to perhaps not operate a motor vehicle in a safe way. If you have mental health issues that need to be resolved or, or are in the midst of capacity concerns as we get older. If you've had a ticket, if you've had an accident, those should be the triggers and those should be the triggers at any age. They shouldn't be based on when you turn either 75 or 80 years old. These should be things that are based off of the condition of the individual driver and not a holistic policy. The removal of the mandatory test for those over age 75 is a critical piece of telling those older Illinoisans that we want them here, we welcome them here, and we understand that this ageist policy needs to change, and we're here to stand up and do that. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Kiker. Um, uh, Senator DeWitt. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Good afternoon, everyone. We'll try to fight through the allergies here. I apologize. Um, 
Thank you for being here to discuss a very important legislative step that we are all taking with protecting seniors from age discrimination. Our senior citizens are invaluable to the fabric of our communities. They volunteer, they mentor, and contribute in countless ways. Facilitating a smoother license renewal process allows them to maintain this engagement, continuing to enrich our communities while continuing to enrich their own personal lives. Driving is more than just a mode of transportation for our seniors. It's a lifeline to family, friends, and social activities. It enables them to keep their social and familial connections strong, contributing to a richer, more engaged life. House Bill 4431 is fundamental to promoting independence among our senior citizens. By retaining their driving privileges, we support their autonomy and mobility, <coughs> two crucial elements for aging in their homes and remaining active in their communities with friends and with their families. It is important to clarify that the legislation does not compromise road safety. Rather, the bill acknowledges that age alone is not a predictor of the ability to drive a car. Let's not forget the economic benefits. Seniors who are able to drive contribute to local economies, whether it's through shopping, dining, or participating in paid and volunteer roles, their mobility is an asset to every one of our communities. It's also noteworthy that Illinois stands alone in this requirement, clinging to an outdated, unfunded assumption about older drivers. House Bill 4431 addresses this oversight, aiming to remove the unnecessary burden placed on millions of older Illinoisans. The legislation is about respect, it's about compassion, and it's about understanding our senior citizens. We stand before you today to recognize our older drivers' contributions, their capabilities, and fulfilling their needs. I urge all stakeholders to support House Bill 4431 as it not only benefits our senior community, but enriches our society as a whole. With that, I'd like to introduce AARP Illinois Executive Council member and lifelong resident of Springfield, Candace Trees. I don't need to introduce myself again, but I will. My name's Candace Trees, and thank you all for coming today. Um, I, I'm an older driver, as you can see, and I strongly support ending the additional testing requirement for drivers age 75 and older. As a widow, I safely drive myself everywhere I need to go, whether it's to the grocery store, a medical appointment, or even to visit my friends and family. I like to call myself my own self-escort. And I know that I am, not, I am like many other older drivers, having to drive yourself where you need to go. It is unfair that older adults must retest to keep their license in Illinois. When the statistics are in our favor, showing that we are among the safest drivers. <clears throat> to me, it is pure age discrimination to be forced to take a special test just because I reach a certain age. As a matter of fact, because I'm that age doesn't mean I'm a bad driver. I'm probably a much better driver than my 18-year-old granddaughter and my 24-year-old grandson. So I know I'm a better driver than they are. I don't have any tickets. <laughs> my parents safely drove into their 80s, and I can tell you that while they were excellent drivers with clean records, retaking the physical driving test was an intimidating and negative experience for them. It's very intimidating to be sitting next to someone and having them tell you how, that you're driving and that you're not doing good. And you know you're already doing good and you know that you follow the rules. Seniors who drive remain active in their communities. We attend social events. We contribute to the lives and many other lives, including our children and our grandchildren, taking them where they need to go, getting those calls, mom, can you help? Mom, I need you to go here. Mom, can I need you to go there? 
if I would fail a driver's test because I would be intimidated, that means now we have to rely on somebody else and we have to find somebody else to do what we need to do. May have to call an Uber when I can Uber just as well as uh, they are. And then I don't cost any money. Families and caregivers benefit when seniors can maintain their independence through driving. Just as I drove my late husband around to doctor's appointments because he became, sometimes became unable and couldn't do it and I would have to take him and take him to his appointments and just take him around because sometimes he just didn't feel like driving, I became the driver. And I see so many other women or spouses driving their husbands to where they need to go. We shouldn't have to feel intimidated when it comes time to taking, uh, getting our driver's license renewed. We ought to just be able to, if we can afford it, put our money in, send it, and go get what we need to have. It was my pleasure to drive to the Capitol today. I drove my own self here today because I am my own self's driver, right? <coughs> and so it was a, a thank you for letting me make these points. And I strongly urge the legislature to pass House Bill 431 to stop this form of age discrimination. And I'd like to thank those who have sponsored this bill and thank you for coming today. Ryan. So I do wanna recognize, I have an amazing set of co-sponsors that you guys can look at the bill status on here, but a couple of them wanted to come down and I'm gonna give them the opportunity to talk. Now I have both Representative Joyce Mason who has championed this issue for a number of years and Representative David Vela. So if either of you would like to make any comments. Thank you, Jeff, um, and thank you, Candace, for your story. And I, I, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew when this was, you know, out there that this is not an issue of Republican or Democrat. I'm a Democrat. I'm a lifelong Democrat. But this is not one of those issues that should be divisive amongst the party. This is just a question of what's fair and what's not fair. I was a how I came to this was I was a criminal defense attorney for about 25 years. I represented thousands of people for tickets. The amount of people I represented over this age. I, I can count on one hand. You know who I represent? 18-year-olds, 16-year-olds, 22. Those are the ones getting tickets. Those are the ones who probably should have to take extra driving tests because they're distracted, because they don't have the experience of driving the 75-year-olds. That, that they just, they're just not good drivers. I, I was a horrible driver. I had a lot of accidents between the ages of 16 and 21. The older I get, the more I realize, take your time. Stay in your lane. Do what's right. And it's, and it's you know, I feel like I'm a safer driver. So I just wanted to say thank you very much for bringing this bill. Thank you very much for AARP for all they're doing. Candace, thank you for coming. And thank you for letting me be part of this because I think this is, this is one of those bipartisan issues that we can all, I think, get behind. So anyway, thank you very much. And I, I'm going to urge my members to, to vote for this bill as much as we can. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm State Representative Joyce Mason. I represent the 61st District of Illinois, which is the northeastern most corner of the state. Um, in Illinois, we believe in equity. We fight for it all the time. We fight discrimination here in the Capitol every day. And this bill does exactly that. We are the only state in the nation right now that treats our seniors differently makes them jump through extra hoops without the data to back it up. In fact, if we base these decisions on the data, we'd be doing extra testing for our younger drivers, not our seniors. It's time to end this discriminatory practice and have policies that are based on facts and not stereotypes. <clears throat> I do encourage all drivers to work with their doctors and their families and pay attention to any issues or conditions that might prevent them from driving safely, no matter who you are. We each have a personal responsibility to keep ourselves and our fellow community members safe. I really want to thank Leader Kiker for his work on this. Um, you know, it's something I've been passionate about and we both had bills and he has done a tremendous job working this bill, and it is, as others have said, a great example of the bipartisan work that gets done here in the Capitol that nobody likes to talk about. <laughs> um, and I'm so grateful to AARP for their advocacy. I'm a proud AARP member myself, and I so appreciate all of the work that they do. Thank you. 
Well, thank you all very much for your comments. Really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for the support of the legislation, for sure. Uh, and with that, we are open for questions, if anybody has any. So I just had a question. Um, so is this like the first step of getting rid of the requirement? So if enacted House Bill 4431, does the, uh, like the Secretary of State, it gives him the power to remove that requirement now? So if this is enacted, does it remove the requirement? Yes. Okay. And the Secretary of uh, State's office is neutral on it. They've been very good about uh, saying that this is a policy that the legislature should address, and if they choose to do so, they'll honor whatever the legislature decides. Uh, so it, it simply removes the licensing, uh, the behind-the-wheel driver's test when you renew your license. Uh, it doesn't address other issues that we need to come back another time and address, and that would be things like the, the physical capacity, uh, if you have mental capacity issues, if you have tickets or accidents, and those other triggers that I spoke about, that is not included in this bill. Those would be a separate follow-up issue that we just wanted to make maintain a distinction between this ageist policy and what needs to happen on the other side. Um, anything, I know that, you know, bipartisan support, what do the opponents say? <clears throat> well, most of them are pretty cautious about it because AARP's involved. <laughs> <laughs> You know, what, what I've seen for the most part is, is folks fall into the, uh, I think Representative Mason uh, was great at pointing out the stereotypes that are out there, right? I, and folks will talk about an accident that they remember that, it, that an older person was involved in. The things that I would point out is that that person was licensed at the time the accident happened. So this, this doesn't do anything to stop that from happening. Arguably, if we included and were able to incorporate in a follow-up bill those triggers for physical issues or mental capacity diminishment, um, tickets or accidents, we're then in a much better place and arguably put Illinois at the forefront of safe driving on our roads because we're actually being attentive to the problem areas regardless of age instead of just when you have a birthday. Any other questions? Awesome. Okay. Thank you Thanks all. for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. No, this was good. <laughs>